Can the Masoretic accents help you to become a better reader of Biblical Hebrew? Hi, I'm Doug, and I want to encourage you in studying the Biblical languages. And today we want to talk about a strategy for reading comprehension for Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic in particular. And this is based on using a tool that for many people is hiding in plain sight, the Masoretic Accentuation System. Now, what I'm going to share with you today is going to be drawn largely from an article I wrote. It was published in 2023 in Hebrew Higher Education. It's called Teaching with the Teamim, How the Masoretic Accents Can Foster Fluency for Reading Biblical Hebrew. And I want to thank Dr. Nietzsche Krohn, the editor of the journal, for inviting me to contribute this. And I had many people who gave me some helpful feedback, and it's based on presentations that I got to give at the National Association of Professors of Hebrew International Conference on Hebrew Language, Literature, and Culture in 2022, and also the Regional Evangelical Theological Society meeting for the Southeast at Columbia International University in February of 2023. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you highlights from the article. I'll dip in and read a few sections of it, but I will encourage you to go to the link in the description and you can download the entire article for free. The PDF is right there and there are tons of footnotes and a large bibliography and web links for further resources as well. We won't be able to cover everything in detail in this episode, so if you find this helpful, I encourage you to get that article and dig deeper. So again, the title is Teaching with the Teamim, How the Masoretic Accents Can Foster Fluency for Reading Biblical Hebrew. I believe that Biblical Hebrew instruction actually can produce students who are able to read the text fluently. And what do we mean by that? Well, Timothy Rosinski has a good definition. He says, reading fluency is made up of two distinct components at two ends of the reading spectrum, automaticity in word recognition and expression in oral reading that reflects the meaning of the text. In a sense, reading fluency is the essential link between word recognition at one end of the spectrum and reading comprehension at the other, end quote. Now, that may seem like a distant dream to some biblical Hebrew students to be able to go through the text, read those words, maybe words that are even well known from vocabulary learning, but to put those together and to phrase them and to put them in sentences just seems so far away. And many biblical Hebrew classrooms sound a lot like this description of children learning to read from Peter Schreiber in 1991. He said, many children learning to read go through a phase known as word calling, during which their oral reading is halting, expressionless, and word by word, despite a fairly high level of accuracy in word identification. And he advocates that chunking the text according to the syntactic structure is something that uh, is important and that people have some difficulty with that. But in Biblical Hebrew, I believe we have something that is going to help us group the text into smaller units that are larger than word units so that we can appropriately phrase and, and chunk the text as we read. And that something is not something new, but something old, the Teamim or the Masoretic accents. But it's important to uh, note up front that this seems impossible to some students and teachers. Biblical Hebrew, for those of us who don't have a Semitic language background initially, maybe we have not even studied any other language at all, Hebrew is already extremely difficult. We have to go from right to left. The letters are unfamiliar. The sounds, getting used to gutturals, for instance, if we ever learn to pronounce some of them properly. There are so many challenges already, so why add more complexity with using the Teamim or the Masoretic accents. Well, this has led some programs to forget about them altogether. Lars Lode in 1994 wrote about this. He said, most Old Testament scholars, both traditional and modern, do not pay much attention to the Masoretic accents. The vast majority of us were taught not to pay any attention to them, or at most we have learned to recognize the middle of a verse by the accent atnok, the upside-down V-shaped accent, which occurs under the last word of the first half of the verse. 
Some of us have studied the table of accents inserted in our Biblia Hebraica, but few of us retain all their names, and rare are those who make constant use of the accents in their study and teaching. My burden in this article and in this episode is that the Masoretic accents are not something that should just be reserved for advanced study in Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic, or something that's considered some nerdy minutia that normal people don't need to pay any attention to. Rather, I think the Masoretic accents, properly taught, can be introduced even very early on in the study of Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic, and that it will be of great benefit for students to do so, first of all, in developing reading fluency. I'm not alone in this. Kleins and Myers, in their recent Hebrew reader for the Psalms, 40 beloved texts, say this, the accents can greatly aid one's understanding of the text and even foster fluency. Many popular books written about speed reading, that is learning to read faster, advocate attempting to process large portions of text with each glance at a page or fixation. In contrast, research has shown that human beings can process between one and three words at most in any given fixation. Conveniently, the disjunctive accents of the Masoretic cantillation system break up the text into units that are usually about one to three words in length, and the formatting of our book can therefore help you become more efficient in learning to read Hebrew with both increasing speed and greater skillfulness. Being convinced of this very point, I want to encourage you to make use of the Masoretic accents in learning to read and teach Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. But before we talk in detail about some of the methodology that we can use to benefit from the Masoretic accentuation system for reading fluency, let's talk just a little bit about where these came from. We look, for example, at the best Biblical Hebrew manuscripts. We have the Aleppo and Leningrad codices from the 10th and 11th centuries, respectively, and they preserve an ancient reading tradition of the Hebrew consonantal text. And they have managed to preserve for us the pronunciation, but also aspects of the stress of syllables, of grouping words together according to uh, syntactic structures at times, and of singing, of cantillation, and various Jewish chanting traditions uh, being reflected with these graphemes, these little symbols. And they could be understood in terms of separating and joining groups of words, that is, of disjunctive accents and conjunctive accents. There are different sets of the accents between what are called the 21 prose books and the three poetic books of Job, Proverbs, and Psalms. There's some overlap as well between those books, but the poetic books have some distinctive forms not found in the prose books. Now those three functions, the stress, the singing, the syntax, those are all helpful when we think about using them for reading fluency. For the stress, that affects the pronunciation, so we can learn how to pronounce words correctly since most of the accents fall on the stress syllable. There are some exceptions though. The cantillation or the singing function is helpful, especially in terms of phrasing, because when you think about singing a song, you know if you have been in any kind of musical training that you will breathe between some words, and there are other words that the director will say, make sure you don't take a breath here. Let's keep these together. And there's something similar that we see in the Masoretic accents that will help us to become better readers. And then there is the syntax and the grouping of, of words that are, are going to go together sometimes in phrases and clauses according to the Masoretic accents. These features will overlap with each other at various times as well. Now, when we talk about the accents, uh, we uh, can't present them all at once. If you look at the table of accents in the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia. Or if you look at this pullout from its predecessor, and if you were to open that up and look through all those accents, or at a list, maybe in a grammar that includes them, not all grammars do, you'll see that it would be very daunting for anybody to try to teach or to learn these, especially as beginners. So we need to think about how to, to scaffold them appropriately for our learners so we can build some kind of a framework, create, as it were, training wheels on a bicycle uh, so that the student doesn't have to worry about balance at this point, just pedaling, steering, braking. We can talk about certain aspects rather than others and they can branch out and build off of that later. So let's talk about three ways that we can scaffold the Te'amim if we are teaching Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. First, we can provide an overview of the accents. We can 
talk about those functions. We can talk about the syllable stress. We can talk about the singing or the cantillation. We can talk about the syntactic grouping of words together. And we can think of it in terms of pauses, like in punctuation, where we would have a comma or a semicolon or a period and how we'll have various degrees of pauses. And we can relate that kind of thinking to the Masoretic accents at times when we're thinking about how to divide up the text, how to chunk it to make better biblical Hebrew readers who aren't just doing word calling. Second, we need to decide how much detail needs to be mastered by the student. We can't throw all of the accents at them. We do want them to continue in our course. And if we will limit them, it'll be a lot better for everybody. So let's think about Siluk and Sof Pasuk. They all need to be able to recognize, okay, this shows the end of the verse, and this vertical line occurs on the last word of every verse. They need to know Atnak which looks like an upside down V, or depending on the font, it may look like a wishbone. They need to know that's going to appear in almost all of the verses in the Hebrew Bible, and it's going to mark a major division in the text. They need to know about Zakef Katan uh, and the two little dots that you'll see in many verses that are dividing it into segments, and Tifcha and uh, Ravia, uh, for instance. There are others they could learn too, but start with those. They can also learn about uh, Mecha and Munak, two of the most common conjunctive accents. And with just a handful of those accents, they're going to be able to see verse after verse in both poetry and prose, how the accents can help them chunk the text up into smaller portions. So as they learn the words, as they learn to pronounce each word, they can put those words into groups and they can, can phrase them appropriately. The third thing we need to think about is providing a complete reference to our students. Even though we overview the basic uses of the Teamim, even though we limit our initial introduction to a handful of the most common accents, they still need a list. Now, maybe you have a biblical Hebrew grammar you're already using, and it includes those accents. Fine. Maybe it doesn't. And in that case, if you have BHS and they've got the insert in their copy, that could work. I've also created, both within my article and as a separate PDF, a handout that can be given to students that has all the accents for the prose books on one page, for the poetic books on another page. But some way or other, we need to equip them with access to the complete list of accents. So that way, if they see one they don't know or need a little review, they'll say, oh, there's there's that one. That's what that is. And so that's helpful. And, and we want to encourage them to, to dig a little bit deeper as well. There are also books on the accents that will include them. This book by Futado, Basics of Hebrew Accents, highly recommended for beginners. This is the best beginner introduction to the Hebrew accents. And you may want to even consider including it as a required textbook in your course. Now, with those considerations in mind, let's talk about some of the practical tools and strategies we can take advantage of to help the students to learn to read with the accents. One way we can make the accents more accessible to students is to format the text. We can do this through spacing, where we start a new clause on a new line, and where we have pauses within a clause, we can tab or make a space there on the same line. Another thing we can do is to use color. And I find it very effective to use red for the disjunctives and green for the conjunctive accents. And that kind of correlates with the, the stop and go uh, idea that um, many will find um, useful and, and common when they think about traffic lights. So you, you stop on the conjunctive accents, at least briefly, uh, or maybe yield sometimes, but you, you, you come to some kind of a pause. And then on the conjunctive accents, it's green and you just keep going into the next word or accentual unit. I've created a Jonah reader using the red and green for the disjunctive and conjunctive accents, respectively. And that's free for download. You can also use shapes in this regard, too, which may be helpful, especially for those who have challenges for seeing color. You could use a triangle where you would have the red and a circle where you would have the green. So when they see the triangle, they know to slow down, to pause, to stop. And when they see the circle, they know to continue going. I want to credit uh, Dr. Samuel Arnett with the idea for the red and green conjunctive accents, and I want to credit Dr. Steve Boyd for the idea of using not just color, but shapes to help students.
You can also copy and paste biblical Hebrew text with the accents from Bible software or a Bible website into the tool developed by Charles Loader at hebrewtransliteration.app. Go to the structure option and you can choose in the settings which accents you want to break onto a new line or which you want to space according to a tab. And this can also help you produce formatted text. Whatever formatting method you use, maybe you'll come up with your own. You can have students begin to create their own formatted texts using the same principles. Now, another thing you can do besides the formatting is to introduce the diagramming of verses according to the Masoretic accents. This can overcome some of the foreignness, get them more familiar with them, and take another step to progress in their reading fluency. I've given examples from James D. Price, from Sung Jin Park, and Gary Schnitger's adaptations of Miles Cohane's diagrams. Uh, these can all be found in my article, and it's just another way to get students working with the accents and, and used to them. You can also integrate reading. Oral reading is very helpful because as they're doing this, again, this is the whole idea that you're using these to develop the reading fluency so they can hear the text pronounced themselves. They can be doing this before others, get peer examples, peer feedback, instructor feedback, and have all of this working together. And there are tools that they can use to practice on their own as well. AnimatedHebrew.com has this Bible reader that can pronounce the entire verse, or you can break it into smaller sections and they align with the accentuation system. Now, there are other websites that can be used for reading practice as well. Bible Software has some free and paid versions of Biblical Hebrew text being read, and you can hear the readers pausing according to the accent. So these are good models for students when they are practicing their oral reading as well. And that's what we want to see with the tail meme. Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemaim ve et haaretz. Ve haaretz haita tohu vavohu ve choshek al pene tehom. Ve ruach Elohim merachefet al pene hamaim. Ve yomer Elohim yahi or. Vayehi or Vayar Elohim et haor kitov Vayavdel Elohim bein haor uvein hachoshek Vayikra Elohim laor yom Vela choshek kara laila Vayehi erev vayehi voker yom echad now, hopefully, as teachers, we are excited about the value of the Masoretic accents. We know their importance. We see how useful they are for students, but we also know we're limited in our time with the students. We want to inspire a love for them, and we want to see them go on and explore even more. So what are some ways that we can encourage that? Well, first, I think having works available for reference and further study in the classroom if possible, or maybe it's just a reading list that we provide for them. It could be journal encyclopedia articles, introductory treatments like Futados that I mentioned earlier, highly recommended here for beginners, uh, or more intermediate works like Parks, Fundamentals of Hebrew Accents, or whether it's something more advanced like Israel Yevin's Introduction to the Tiberian Mizora, which belongs in every biblical scholar's library. Uh, especially if we are looking at the Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. Uh, these things are things that we can provide or point students to. Another thing we can talk about with students is uh, the research that uh, relates the accents to other features in the Biblical Hebrew text. One of my favorite chapters in a book is Lars Lode's A Discourse Perspective on the Significance of the Masoretic Accents. He talks about how disjunctive accents in some cases may signal discourse features, show some prominence, focus, emphasis, as well as serve as syntactic markers. There are articles discussing the segmentation of poetic cola by the accents. Raymond de Hoop, Tanya Notaria, Sungjin Park have all written on this topic. Uh, Raymond de Hoop and Paul Sanders recently have argued that the original purpose of the accents was to delimit units within the verse for reading. This was an article that appeared a, a little bit too late for me to integrate uh, in the research from my own article. 
but it definitely has the same kind of uh, direction. I also want to point out here with recent research to be aware of, don't forget the name Sophia Pitcher. Sophia Pitcher in her 2017 master's thesis, her 2020 doctoral dissertation, and a 2021 article and in continuing presentations on this and related topics is pushing back against the conventional understanding of the Masoretic accentuation system as a fundamentally dichotomous system. She's arguing more for a prosodic use of the accents and she has been doing some groundbreaking research in this area. I want to get into it more myself and see uh, you know, how it's going to maybe help me understand and reassess some things. But even so, I still suspect that the use of the Masoretic accents as a tool for reading fluency is still going to hold up. Now, another area of exploration, especially for students who enjoy music and movement, is to explore the musical tropes and the hand gestures associated with the Masoretic accents. The series on YouTube by Hazan Arian Brown, for instance, you're going to get uh, the hand symbol for Atnak, and it's going to, you know, even look like Atnak. And that's another connection that students can, can make them. There are introductory guides to Torah chanting by Marshall Portnoy and Jose Wolf, as well as Joshua Jacobson. Another thing instructors can do is to suggest the use of print or digital tools to display and find accent patterns. Students might want to get into those and see if they can find some similar sequences. Practice reading texts with those kinds of sequences, for instance, and maybe find an avenue for some scholarly research as well. The five-volume concordance by James D. Price could be helpful in this way. There's also an online tool, quantifiedcantillation.nl, by Noah Liebman that lets you search the five books of the Torah. You can see if a sequence begins a verse or is included within a verse and find all the verses where that appears. For example, the pattern in Genesis 1.1, you can see it also appears in Genesis 1.5 and in Genesis 1.27. This kind of searching can also be done in commercial Bible software. Accordance Bible software and Logos Bible software both have some uh, capabilities that allow for the searching or the display of the Masoretic accentuation. I hope our time together has convinced you of the value of the Masoretic accentuation system for reading Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic. If you're a student, I hope your appetite has been whetted. I hope you see, yes, this is something I can make use of, and I certainly want to get beyond word calling. I want to be able to phrase. I want to be able to read with expression. If you're a teacher, I hope you will teach with the Taomi and foster this fluency and see students who are better readers and thus better comprehenders of the text and better students of the biblical languages. Check out the article, download the PDF in the link in the description, and keep studying the biblical languages. Can the Masoretic accents help you to become a better reader of biblical Hebrew? Yes, they can.